I believe everyone should step back and look at how things uh, seem from the white fanatic perspective. They see the white republic that they built falling out of their hands. They see America losing its preeminent global position in two losing wars, in Latin America falling out of position, in Fidel Castro dying a hero in Latin America, and Chavez laughing his ass off. They see their empire disintegrating. Right? And, and this is part of the thing. is I don't think we're going to be meeting people's day-to-day -day needs, and I don't think we have to help this capitalist system, which has met the needs of American working people on the backs of third-world plantations for my whole lifetime. We don't have to help that. We have to help bring this government down. We have to help destroy this system, and that requires increasing the alienation that working class and oppressed people feel. The way change is going to happen in this country is through the destruction of what we call the United States of America, and we're not going to to do it. It's happening because grand centripetal forces are doing it on its own. Uh, when Obama says that there will not be health care for illegal immigrants, and I might add abortion, uh, what he is saying, right, very clearly, is that America always has 10% of its population enslaved. When the Dred Scott decision said that the, the black man has no rights, the white man is bound to respect, um, as we know, we can change the definition of what whiteness means. Right? And, and I'll just speak here as a white man. I don't often do this in left-wing uh, situations, but I'm opposed to white supremacy not because it's white people involved. I'm opposed to the system that we traditionally call imperialism and the idea that some people have rights and privileges that are not granted to all human beings. And the solution to that problem is called communism and socialism, and we should put it in our mouths. We should say it when we say, what is your politics? I am a socialist. I demand that we have health care for people, and it's not a demand that's negotiable with insurance companies. We will take your insurance companies. We will take the farms in this country. We will shut down the military apparatus in this country, and I'm tired of being told to stuff my anger back in my pants. It's got to end. When people say there is not a left in this country, no, I sat in meetings in this city where leading members of the left said we will not have an anti-war movement, we will not embarrass our Democratic Party candidates. That is a fact. And we don't need to say the names of these people, but God damn it, why are they still sitting in the same chairs in so-called anti-war coalitions when they endorse what this government has done in the supporting of Gaza and the siege that's happening right now? It is happening right now. And I, I want to put some gravel in my voice because all this thing that we're all on a coalition, let's just be clear one more time. Van is not a communist. He was 10 years ago. And just like him, when the, when the Los Angeles riots and rebellions happened, I was there. It changed my life. A few years before that, I said, it's over. I watched 1989. I watched Tiananmen Square. I watched the Berlin Wall. I said, it's all over. Right? But then Los Angeles erupted, and the people who were told they didn't matter, they burned that city to the ground. And the next time that fight happens, I want it to be an organized fight that's progressive and not simply arson. I watched France burn this year, and God damn it, I'm with those people. That's it. We have a left. There's a fight to be had, and we should stop pussyfooting around about it. Somebody who I uh, often disagree with, Rebecca Solnit, wrote a really interesting piece about Detroit and about how the left was always demanding people rebuild uh, Detroit, bring back the industry, and talk about the Diego Rivera murals and all the fetishization of the machines, and, and it's not coming back, people. Um, and one of the things I think happened is we lost our concentration on mutual aid and respect amongst people and meeting people's needs. Um, but there's a key thing, there's a key thing, and that is, broadly, broadly speaking, without a people's army, the people have nothing. Uh, if we do not have our own and, and by independent, I mean antagonistic to the existing state apparatus and state of affairs. If we do not have our own force, power is always its own gravity, and we will always be chumped by them every single time. If we advance leaders who go into that system, they will cut and run because it will be, and that's, that's what it means, that even someone who renounced uh, their former left-wing past and embraced capitalism and is an evangelist for it, even that person doesn't have a place at their table. It's just remarkable, while a murderer like Rahm Emanuel, who served in the Israeli army, uh, I'm sorry, I just want to get real, I'm not in a coalition with those motherfuckers. Um, so, so, and, and part of, it's funny, as, as someone who, who does claim the word communist and would argue that every socialist in this room should use that term when they identify themselves, at the very least, uh, communism is the specter. It's very important we understand this. There's a reason we can't say that word. It's because it's the answer to our problems. Communism is the brotherhood of all people. When they say well, a health care problem, well, yeah, here's the problem. Shut down the insurance companies and we're going to socialize medicine. Well, that's off the table. Obama already said that. So now we have to do all these jury rig half ass solutions that aren't going to make anyone happy that let the rights to sabotage and, and once again we'll lose. Uh, so part of it is without being able to fill that lacuna, that empty space, 
Uh, that's why they suppress communism. That's why they make us apologize every time we open our mouths. You know, FDR and Winston Churchill, uh, uh, Winston Churchill called Palestinian people dogs. He said, I don't care how long the dog has lied in the manger, they have no right to their land. Yet liberals and conservatives never have to apologize for that. FDR doesn't have to apologize for Jim Crow, but we have to apologize for what Joseph Stalin did. Well, I haven't killed anyone. All I've done is fight for free speech and expanding the realm of possibility, and we should claim our movements and fight for them frontally. The only way to respond to anti-communism is to jump on their tables and say, we'll bury you. Because if you hem and you haw, they will roll right over us right over us. And if we go back to communities and tell young people that they just need a jobs program, they know better. See, that's part of the thing is I think that, that when we claim that we're going to be meeting people's needs, they just think we're another poverty pimp constituency hustler. And they know exactly what that is because they've seen it their whole lives. And there's no reason for us to, to basically cut ourselves off at the knee. Our one great power is meeting the need that this society can't meet. And that's, that's better than hope. <laughs>